Hi, this is Mark Hopper, an Adobe Certified Instructor at Lodestone, and I have a question for you Captivate users. Has it frustrated you in the past that you haven't been able to add buttons to your master slides? Well, with Captivate 6, I have a solution for you. We're going to be able to create buttons on master slides using the new Smart Shapes in Captivate 6. So how are we going to do this? First of all, we're going to choose a Smart Shape that matches the image of our button, in our case, that's going to be the rounded rectangle. So I'll insert a rounded rectangle smart shape onto my main master slide. Then instead of using the default fill, a gradient, I'm going to choose to use a texture instead and choose the button image as the texture. Next, I'll reshape the smart shape to match the image. And then in the properties panel, I'm going to choose to use it as a button, as well as assigning actions for both mouse and keyboard events. Then. I'll look at other options for the cursor display, and I also want my button to pause the timeline. And then finally, I may have a couple of slides that I don't want the buttons to appear on, and I'll show you how to remove buttons from one of the theme slides in the master slide panel. So let's get started. Okay, so I have Captivate 6 open, and I've already put together a couple of slides in a presentation and each slide is using a different theme slide from the master panel. I want to show you that if we go to the main master slide here to place a smart shape with a button in it, that it will also appear on all the other slides as well. And we'll take a look at how we can also remove that if we don't want the buttons to appear on certain slides. So going to the main master slide panel, I'm going to select the primary master slide. Now before we place our smart shape, I want to show you in the library that I already have the back button and the next button for this in the library panel. These button shapes are rounded rectangles, so that's what I want to use as the option in my smart shape, a rounded rectangle that I can then size down to the size of the button. So over in my smart shape tools, I'm going to select the rounded rectangle. Now I'm going to come out and drag and draw out a rounded rectangle here. And the default options for this are to fill it with a gradient. Let's go take a look at our properties panel. And in the fill and stroke area, I'm going to remove the stroke by taking the width down to zero. And then for the fill, I'm going to choose instead of a solid or gradient, we have a new option here for texture. So let me select that. I can see that Captivate comes with some textures preloaded, but we're going to use our image from the library for our button as a custom image. So I'm going to click on the folder to select that and I can see my library. So I'm going to start off with the next crisp up PNG button and click OK. Now by default, it wants to tile this. So let me go back to my fill panel and take a couple of these options off. I want to remove tiling and I want to remove the stretch and I can see now that the button is its normal size. Now I'm ready to start resizing this smart shape but before I do I want to explain to you this option here this little yellow square. This allows me in this rounded rectangle to click and drag to make this rounded rectangle more curved on the edges. I'm going to go ahead and increase this to the maximum before I start to size this down. Now I'll scale down my shape here to fit the size of the button. Click away to make sure that that looks correct. It does. And the next option that I want to take in my properties panel is at the very top. With this smart shape, I want to use it as a button. So let me select use as button and then I'm going to take a look at the actions. So on success, go to next slide. That's exactly what I want. I'll go ahead and add the keyboard shortcut here as well by clicking in the shortcut and pressing my right arrow. So both the clicking and the keyboard shortcut of the right arrow will work for progressing this presentation to the next slide. Let me move my button into place. And rather than go through this entire process again, I'm going to simply duplicate this button. So I'll choose Edit Duplicate or Control D as the keyboard shortcut. 
I'll move this button over. Simply go to my properties panel. I'm going to change the action to go to previous slide. I'll change the shortcut by pressing the left arrow. And then I'll go up to the fill and stroke area and change the custom image instead of the next crisp up PNG. Let me change that to the back crisp up PNG and click OK. And now I have my two buttons programmed. Let me shift select both of these and also bring up my alignment tools. And I'm going to select here to align them to the top. And then I'll go back and take a look at my presentation. Now here on my first slide, I can see my buttons are in place. And as I go through each of the slides after, the buttons are there. But let's say on my first slide, I actually don't want to have buttons there. Let's say I'm going to have some music playing here, and I just want the presentation to start off showing my uh, title. No buttons. It'll advance to the next slide on its own. So how do I remove these buttons from this particular slide? Well, with this slide selected, if I go over and take a look at the properties panel, I can see there are options here for master slides, but nothing about allowing me to remove the objects that were placed on the main master slide. Because I'm using this background here is from the uh, master slide theme where I have introduction, that's where I need to go to remove these. So in my master slide panel, I'll go to that introduction slide theme and in my properties, I'm going to come over and take the option to show, to show main master slide objects. I'll simply remove that. And now those buttons are not appearing here on this slide. So let me test out my presentation. I'll do a file preview project. Opens up the preview for me. You can see it gets to this slide but it's not pausing. That's because I need to make another couple of options here in my master slide panel. So let me return back to this master slide and I'm just going to go ahead and take care of both of these buttons at one time. I'll shift select both of these buttons and I'm going to go and take a look at other options. So in the options for both of these buttons, I want to do a couple of things. I want to show the hand cursor and I also want to choose pause project until the user clicks. So with that selected, let me save my file. I'll preview. See it goes through the first slide and then it gets to my next slide and it will pause allowing me to then click the next button to continue. So to review, we've inserted a smart shape. We chose the rounded rectangle on our main master slide and then filled it with a button image as a texture. We reshaped the smart shape to match the image and then chose in the properties panel to use it as a button as well as assigned actions for mouse and keyboard events. We've also set the options for the cursor display and that we want the buttons to pause our timeline and then also investigated how would we go about removing buttons from theme slides that we don't want them to appear on. Thanks so much for being with us at Lodestone and for more detailed instruction, come to www.lodestone.com.